So it's time for us to begin our second unit of the year, and uh, this set of notes is basically an introduction on what matter is and a few theories that have to do with how matter works, and then we'll discuss the first way that scientists classify matter based on the particles that make it up. So we've talked about the definition of matter several times this year, but just to review, it is anything that has mass and takes up space. So basically it's just like the stuff that makes up everything that you see. Um, so there's a theory of matter based on particles that create it, and it has six parts. The first part says that matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms. And in a few weeks we'll talk more in detail about what makes up atoms. Um, but these are basically like one of the smallest things that exist. Particles are in constant motion, so there's never a time that they stop moving. They may slow down a whole lot, but they never stop. They're also together, held together by strong forces, and there are empty spaces between particles. So the particles are never crammed so t closely together that they touch fully. Um, each substance has its own unique particles. And so each substance is made up of its, its own particles that create its identity. So gold atoms are different from copper atoms, for example. So whatever makes up copper is different from what makes up gold. Finally, the last part of the theory says that temperature affects the speed of particles. This is one major key that I want you to remember for the future because we'll be talking about this again and again throughout the year. So the more we heat things up, the faster they start moving. And the more we cool things down, the slower they start moving. So the most basic kind of matter is called an element. This definition says it's a substance that cannot be broken down into any other substances by chemical or physical means. So this is like the most basic um, type of matter there is that we can chop in half over and over and over until we get to the smallest piece. This is an element. Um, there are ways that we can break down elements further, but... It's not chemically and it's not physically, it's by another method, and we'll talk about that later in the year. So elements have a nickname, they're called the building blocks of matter, and elements are made up of those specific types of atoms. So um, copper, gold, tin, those are all types of atoms, kind of like Lucky Charms and Cheerios are types of cereal. Um, and elements are on the periodic table. So if you look at this picture of the periodic table, it's kind of easy to see... Um, why they have the nickname of building blocks of matter because it kind of looks like they're stacked on top of each other in this table very much like blocks so that's a good way to help remember what their nickname is a few examples of elements include helium which has the atomic symbol of HE um, another example we just said is copper and that one has a symbol of CU and then chlorine has a symbol of CL. So we'll actually be become very familiar with these elements over the next few weeks and eventually you'll start memorizing some on your own. Compounds are another way that scientists might classify matter. So if it's made up of two or more elements and they are chemically combined to each other, so there is a bond between them that's holding them together, then it would be classified as a compound. So in this picture you can see these different color circles represent different types of elements, and the lines show bonds holding them together. So that is a sign that they are chemically combined. One characteristic of compounds is that they are a combination of elements that have a specific ratio. So that means that if I have water, it's always going to be H2O. It's always going to have two hydrogens attached to one oxygen. If one of those hydrogens is missing, it's not water. Okay, so this little uh, diagram shows you several examples of compounds that we might see in um, in the atmosphere. So hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and chlorine actually come in pairs when we see it in nature. So they are actually attached to each other. So that's that's a very specific type of compound that we'll talk about later. Then we have nitrogen oxide, water, nitrogen dioxide, so the di means that there are two, and carbon dioxide. So you can see the way that they arrange themselves. A couple of other examples of compounds include hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. 
um, which is HCl. Finally, the third way that scientists might classify matter in terms of the properties of their atoms and the way they arrange themselves are mixtures. These are made up of two or more substances, so two or more elements that are in the same place, but they're not chemically combined. So they're just kind of sitting next to each other, but there's no bond holding them together. So because of that, they actually keep their individual properties, and there's no specific ratio. So there doesn't have to be a certain amount of atoms for a mixture to take place. So some examples here on the picture, you see some trail mix, um, you see some dirt, or maybe that's asphalt, I can't really tell. Um, but you don't have to have a specific amount of, like, M&Ms for every peanut or raisin in trail mix. So that's a good way to help remember a mixture, like trail mix is one of those key examples that you'll see constantly. A couple of other examples that we can think of are sand, um, raisin bran, so a type of cereal that has, like, the extra stuff in it. And then salt water is actually two compounds that are next to each other but they're not combined. You can actually separate the salt from the water by boiling the water and then the salt is left behind in the pot, which is a pretty cool experiment. So today in our class we came up with a list of ways that we can describe an object that is unfamiliar or maybe if we're trying to describe it to someone else who can't see it we can use all of these adjectives to help them understand what it is. And so there are different types of properties of matter that scientists will specifically look at to try to identify what it is based on what they know about the elements and compounds and mixtures that they're familiar with. There are two different types of properties. The first is physical, and these describe just the appearance of matter. So this is using like your five senses, really. So shape, density, solubility means the ability to dissolve in water. You know what odor is and melting point boiling point and color, um, they all, they're all pretty self-explanatory. So we actually use several of these in class today. The other type of properties that scientists might use to describe matter are chemical properties. These just describe the chemical makeup. So a lot of times this is dealing with what's inside the matter and how things are arranged inside and how the atoms will react with one another. So the four types of chemical properties that they focus on to identify matter are called acidity, basicity, combustibility, and reactivity. So acidity and basicity basically mean whether or not they are acids or bases. And we'll talk about that more in class to try to clear that up, especially for your flashcards. Combustibility is basically how easily it can catch on fire and reactivity is dealing with how easily these atoms will react with one another, how easily they'll make a bond, or sometimes they don't want to have any type of interaction with other chemicals. So um, that's all under that umbrella of reactivity. So once you're done getting these notes down, be sure you take the video check quiz and submit that for your homework grade tonight. And we will work some more in class tomorrow to try to identify some different matter based on whether it is an element, a compound, or a mixture.